is Paul Wallace. I'm the Africa editor of the Banker magazine, and I'm here with Albert Essien, who in March became the CEO of um, of of EcoBank, one of Africa's largest lenders. Um, Albert, thank you very much for for joining us. And um, in the last year or so, EcoBank uh, has been in the news a lot, and it's gone through um, a, sort of a series of corporate governance crises. I just wanted to get your view on that in terms of how much it's uh, it's sort of um, affected the uh, the bank's reputation uh, among investors and things or whether you think it can can quickly overcome whatever whatever damage was was caused uh, thank you very much uh, Paul uh, yes uh, I think we went through some headwinds uh, I should say it's over uh, stability has come back but you're right uh, it, we took a bit of a knock uh, definitely, uh, money doesn't like noise, isn't it? And um, people will not want to wake up every morning and find uh, their bank as shareholders, regulators, customers, or staff, uh, the bank in the news for the wrong reasons. So we did take a dent, but I should say that that is being uh, quickly repaired. Uh, since I took over, I, I have actually uh, reached out to stakeholders to the staff, uh, to regulators, to shareholders, to customers, to a lot of our partners, journalists, you being one. I was in London last week talking to investors, analysts, both on the buy and the sell side, to explain what we are doing now and how we see uh, the bank going forward. What is your sort of priority for the bank um, for, for the next few years and um, how, how will things change under, under your leadership? I think the most important thing is to build confidence and trust, uh, is to stabilize the institution and to ensure that we work as one united team. So I've always carried this phrase, confidence, trust building, stability and unity. I think in the medium, short term, not medium, short term, these are critical prerequisites because you need a stable platform. Uh, you need to build back that confidence and trust. People need not seek and guess you. Okay? And of course, we also need to come together. What happened sort of gradually seeped into the body politic of the bank, even at the staff level. Uh, not too bad to damage the fabric of the institution, but clearly there was an issue of polarity, and uh, the idea is to come together. So in the short term, that is it. In the mid to long term, you want to look at extracting efficiencies from the platform, operational efficiencies, people efficiency, driving revenue, and uh, what we intend to do is to tackle the issue of cost, cost containment, so uh, in operational efficiency, we're looking at centralized processing. We're looking at more automation. We're looking at moving to alternate channels, e-banking. With people, we're looking at freeing people from the back office to the front so that we have much more firepower uh, for, for the field and making sure that we have the right people in the right places. I guess when we do that, with the sort of platform that we have, uh, we would definitely be able to sustain the upward trend of revenues. Don't forget, 2013, despite the challenges, we broke through the two billion uh, revenue, total revenue barrier. And it's very good for Sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, we are among the best in terms of Sub-Saharan Africa revenue growth goals. What we need to work on more is to extract costs, extract efficiencies, so that we improve our profit before tax and after tax and the return to the shareholders. That is what would engage us mid, medium term to the long term. Uh, talking of um, costs and things, um, EcoBank is now operating in almost, uh, almost 35 countries. Um, it's invested heavily, and people have said that's one of the things that's uh, impacted its profitability ratios uh, in the last few years, its heavy investments. And d does that, from g given what you said, does that signal that the sort of geographical expansion I and heavy investments, and um, perhaps in mergers and in takeovers and things, is going to slow down, or do you still want to move into some new countries and expand your market share in the ones you operate in? Expansion is likely over. I guess if you look at our 
documents in the past, we've always made it a point that there are some countries that were still business in progress, being Mozambique, Southern Sudan, Ethiopia, and Angola. We are in Southern Sudan now, and we are profitable despite the challenges there. Ethiopia to take a while. It's a closed shop to the private sector, but we have a two-man rep office to make sure that we are in touch and also to build business from that platform. We just acquired a small asset of pro credit in Mozambique. We took about 96% of that, okay? And uh, we intend to upscale it to a full-fledged uh, institution. Mozambique is critical to our SADC uh, strategy and business because Mozambique offers the gateway in and out to Zambia, to Z Zimbabwe, to DRC, and to Malawi. So it's important we get Mozambique. Apart from the fact that Mozambique itself is a big contributor to economic development and growth in the SADC region. It has very strong economic fundamentals itself. Then finally, Angola. Angola, together with Ghana, Nigeria, and Kenya, are the four sub-Saharan countries with the largest banking revenue pool. So if you, we want um, actually to have a sustainable growth in revenues in return to the shareholder by way of a, a, a superior PBT, we definitely need to be in Angola too. So largely done, now is consolidation, extracting efficiencies. And our revenues are showing that trend we need to be able to optimize our costs. We need to be able to do things efficiently, operationally and people-wise. And I think that uh, we, we, we will be on the way for real success. Nigeria is um, is by somewhere your uh, your biggest uh, your biggest market in terms of revenues, in terms of customers and uh, and other things. It took a hit last year in uh, in your 2013 res results. You uh, you took big um, uh, provisions in uh, in 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 Nigeria. Can you just ex explain briefly what the future is for Nigeria and whether you think. Um, you know, issues, you know, legacy issues and regarding the takeover of Oceanic Bank there a few years ago, are they sort of mostly done now? And do you see your profits there um, going up quite, quite substantially? Yes, uh, Paul, you're right. Nigeria is very critical uh, to the group. Uh, Nigeria needs to really uh, come up the curve. And uh, we're confident that the measures we've taken will definitely move Nigeria up the curve. Um, Yes, we, we took a hit. I, I wanted to take care of the legacy issue. Uh, we grow in our revenues. Year on year, we grew 17%. Nigeria is one place where we've actually started this program of operational and people efficiency. It's very, very important for us. I'm very confident that this year, the Nigeria uh, 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 subsidiary would contribute uh, really big to, to, to the group, not just by revenue, but also uh, from the BBT angle. So uh, I'm looking forward to a good year for Nigeria and moving forward. Albert, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.